So when most of us learned to write stories, we learned that you need to open with a hook. You need to grab that reader's attention and you're going to do it with a question or you're going to do it with a joke or something exciting. That is just that. It is an opening. It is a hook. But if anybody who's ever gone fishing, and I can tell you my whole family likes to fish, except for me, I don't really like the worms, but my whole, the rest of my family likes to fish, they know that hooking the fish is not catching the fish. Hooking the fish is just getting them interested. Hello, you have food on a plate in front of them. Well, on a hook. So they're gonna go after that. But then you have to reel them in. You have to actually catch them. Well, we need to do that with our readers. So that hook, sure, those are going to be those same things that you learned when you were really young on how to hook your reader. You're going to do that exciting moment or that exciting question or that intriguing little joke that they're going to wonder a little bit more about. That's just a hook. Your hook is short and sweet and engaging. And beyond that, it should only be a word, a sentence, or a paragraph long. That's it for your hook. So hook, word, sentence, or paragraph, short, sweet, and engaging. That's it. Let's talk about your introduction. Your opening is way different from your hook. It's not a word, a sentence, or a paragraph. It's a paragraph, a page, or a chapter. And when you're doing that piece, you need to open with something that's a little bit more engaging than just a joke or just a question you're going to open with one of the four C's. Those four C's include cause. Cause, let's say somebody gets, um, they get cancer in the beginning. That's that, that diagnosis. So sure, you could have that opening punch by opening with the line of the doctor saying, you have cancer. Boy, you open with something that powerful as a statement, great hook. But if you don't give a little bit more after that, you've lost them. By opening with the cause, you're going to expand on this a little bit, use some of the methods that we've talked about, use maybe some research, use maybe some of that uh, brainstorm method we used with the WFA outlines. You can decide how you want to open it. But the idea of a cause opening is you are lining up what the character is going to be working toward in the entire story. So the cause for them is to get better, get healed. You want it to be a cause that your reader is automatically going to get on board with. So that's going to be your cause opening. The next one is to open with character. Character is a fun one to open with. It's, it's a little bit, it can cross over into cause a little bit because you're going to talk about what that character needs to do in cause. But in reality, it's something more. You're not just going to, to have the, the cause of that character that, that character is working toward. You're going to have something that's intriguing about specifically that character. So this could open with, um, you know, she looked in the mirror and, uh, and mourned her, her, her black eye. Well, sure, we've got that hook opening going on there. But then we want to learn a little bit more. Like, you know, she never thought that she would be the, the wife who allowed herself to be hit. She never thought that she would be the woman that um, would have to cower in a corner um, and was more fearful of being in her own home than being out on the streets. So we're going to really get to know who is this character? Who is the person? What do I want for them? You're actually going to lay out a little bit of an objective when you do a character opening. She wanted to get back to that strong, independent woman she was 15 years ago. Lay out that objective, but we need to love that character. We need to see something in her right away. Maybe bring a memory into that opening that's going to talk about and shine a light on who she was before she was in this tough situation that she's in. Then let's talk about curiosity. Curiosity is one of my favorite ones. It's used in a lot of genre fiction, mystery, sci-fi, fantasy. Curiosity is when something 
interesting is in the beginning that you need the answer for. So it could be like he discovered the, the stone and it started to glow in his hand. What is this stone? Why is it glowing? Why does he have it? How did he get it? I am curious about so many things. This is often fantasy related. It's often related to an object. Um, it's also often related to a, a visual. It's usually very highly sensory. You know, once again, that scent filled the air. It was slightly sweet, but with a bitter finish. You know, what? Well, why are we talking about this? Is this a poison gas? Is this something really positive? Is it alluring? Is it drawing me to it? Curiosity is going to usually set up something that's a little bit out of the norm. It's going to be either something that's imaginative or something that is a pinnacle of what somebody wants to achieve, but you're going to have a lot of questions. It's not going to be something that's ultimately clear and your reader is going to want to know the answers to those questions. Sure, you have that opening hook of the rock glowed in his hand, but then you're going to spend that next paragraph, page, or chapter to really dig in on what is making us curious as a reader. So last but not least is chaos. This is opening up in the middle of the madness. And um, this is often in anything that's got a, a battle in it, anything that's got um, a storming climax in it. Uh, I know we've got all those natural disaster scripts, those usually open up in some kind of a chaos that's a smaller version of what will ultimately be the big climax later in the story. So this is the middle of the madness. Your reader is right away drawn in through adrenaline. And these are the four ways that you're going to ultimately open up your story. It's more than a hook. Remember, a hook is a word, a sentence, or a paragraph. It's short, it's sweet, it's engaging. Your opening, your introduction, it's gonna have one of these four C's. Can you have more than one of the C's? Sure, but make sure that one of them is really solid. You're gonna have chaos opening up in the middle of the madness, curiosity, something that's highly sensory and leaves our reader asking lots of questions. Character, we want to like the person who is at the center of the story and pull for them to reach their goal or cause. This is just setting up an ultimate objective that you wanna achieve. That's how you're going to create a great introduction for your story.